Today we are uh, very happy to have with us Professor Yechu Yang from Arizona State University. Here he is with a nice hat. Uh, Yechu Yang is a graduate of uh, our lab, the Computer Vision Lab, the Perception and Robotics Group. Uh, and he did very important work on understanding uh, human action. He was the first to use a context-free grammar <coughs> to parse human activity, especially manipulation actions. And he became a professor at uh, Arizona State University immediately after graduating. And he got his career award from the National Science Foundation the first year while he was uh, in the faculty at ASU. So he has been doing uh, amazing work in combining uh, deep learning uh, techniques and signal processing techniques with uh, symbolic techniques, trying to develop uh, new frameworks in artificial intelligence. And today, we are very happy to hear from him about visual recognition beyond appearance. Because as you know, when people think of recognition today, they think of a pattern recognition problem where they train things to recognize objects and images. Uh, uh, but the story it doesn't stop there. And uh, Professor Young is going to tell us today what lies beyond appearance and how it can be used successfully in robotic applications. Now, to uh, keep the flow uh, going, <clears throat> I would like to ask the audience if they have, if they have questions, to type the questions in the Q&A button and uh, get you, as he gives the talk, he will take some short breaks and he will address the questions especially if they are important for the comprehension of the material. Okay, so let's begin. Professor Young. Thank you, thank you, Yanis. Thank you, Yanis. It's, it's, I'm very honored to be with um, UMD Robotics folks here today and got this opportunity to present some of the work that we are working on and has been published at uh, Arizona State University and um, some of um, most of the work later on, I will talk about focusing on visual recognition beyond appearances. And at the late at the end of the talk, if if time permits, I would also talk a bit about the robotic applications. And um, like Yannis uh, said, I graduate um, from UMD. This is a figure that one of my students brought to me just a a, a few weeks ago, and I was thinking, okay, so th this data set looks familiar, and I really look into it. It's A.V. Williams book building. The reason <laughs> I won't mention it is it's really nice memory spent uh, six years over there. And if you see over there the the, 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 the front door and, and, and a, a little bit uh, ahead of the front door is where Yan is always having his smoke smoking break <laughs> and a lot of conversation happening there. And Okay, so a little bit more about myself. So over the last 10 years, I started my research in uh, vision from Zhejiang University back in China. And then I joined UMD, now the PRG lab led, led by Yanis. And then I moved to Arizona State University and create, um, founded the ASU APG group. And later I also got um, affiliated with the Institute of Auto Automated Mobility uh, at Arizona. So the fundamental research that we do are still uh, routing, rooted in vision. So the visual recognition is always the same. And the application domain that we are attending to is always robotics. And if you think autonomous vehicle is a type of intelligent agent and also a kind of robot that essentially um, is part of the robotics applications we're attending to. 
And lying in the middle is the focus, which we really focusing on growing at Arizona State University. And also it's also rooted during the dates that I'm uh, working with Yanis. Um, at that time, uh, Yanis started a project called Robot Needs Language. That's the time we got um, introduced to this beautiful um, paradigm of uh, linguistic processing. And I'm trying to figure out uh, uh, and also had some um, quite a bunch of work um, using linguistic um, processing to facilitate visual recognition. So I will more focus on the middle part, which is the major growth of um, our lab here at Arizona State University today. Of course, the later days we, we delve into the auto driving business. Um, I'll talk about it later. So what is exactly visual recognition beyond appearances? Uh, you may wonder. Um, actually, in the field of art and, and the literature, uh, it's not a, a, a new concept. One of the examples I always mention to my students and also the, 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 the audiences of uh, asking visual recognition beyond, beyond appearances is a city called Despina that being described by um, the um, famous novelist Calvino in his um, book and also novel Invisible Cities. And Invisible Cities is actually a post more than a novel written by Carvino. It's very famous talking about um, um, Marco Polo describing all kinds of imagined cities to the Kublik Khan. And in the book, there is a city called Despina. And Despina is a city lying between the, Asian, uh, the ocean and the desert. And so, so when, when he described the cities, basically saying when the camel driver sees it, they think of it as a ship. When the sailor discerns the city, the same city, they think it of the desert and all the activities in the desert. So the idea behind it also being portrayed by artists is something like that, right? The same appearance but with different kind of agents, with different prior experience, they discern the same appearance with different in interpretations. So this is an example of visual recognition beyond what you see immediately from the appearance. So this is essentially um, 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 part us from um, classic vision problems. A classic vision problems, as I also teach in ASU, uh, we talk about like epipolar geometry, uh, uh, optical flow constraints, or SLAM, many of them, this um, uh, fairly classic and beautiful series behind uh, these problems. Uh, one of the properties they do have is there are clear physics constraints guiding the research. But while we delve into the land of cognitive vision, or the vision and reasoning, things become a little bit um, blurring. Um, a lot of the insights we have to rely on um, 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 some direct perceptions and straightforward insight. I'll give you guys some examples, overarching examples. Actually, when we are talking about vision recognition beyond appearances, not necessarily we need to delve into the novel. Uh, even kitchen, uh, even uh, even even kid books also portray this kind of ideas. Let's take image captioning as an example, right? So if I give you this image, and if I want you to describe what it is, you may wonder, okay, maybe it's a rabbit, maybe it's a duck. But if I put the context like into the image, oh, it's a duck, it's about to eat a piece of bread. And if I slightly change the context, now you perceive it's a rabbit and he's about to eat a carrot, right? So one of the message that in uh, visual recognition beyond appearances are uh, always the context matters and that adjust and adapt your perception towards the same exactly appearance or the same exactly um, contours and, 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 and visual inputs. Even in visual, visual linguistic QA, we just re recently released the VL QA challenge um, if I put out an uh, image like that, um, previously my pre, um, pre, um, prior lab mate Alex had exactly the same thing. You may think it's a lens, but if I put the context, the linguistic context that associated with this exactly same image, you perceive through parsing the ling uh, linguistic information is essentially a map, right? 
as a mark in a lens shape. So even more, right? Um, even in um, visual question answering domain, um, for example, if I want to answer this question, how many people are waiting for bus? Uh, using the um, um, current uh, frontier um, vision techniques, I won't be surprised they will, it will rec recognize three person, right? Three people. But really uh, like the, the people in the middle, whether it's a performance artist or uh, actually a statue, still uh, um, uh, is a question to be answered. And if you have the knowledge, uh, actually this is a picture taken in uh, Montreal and, and, and in the um, uh, campus of uh, McGill University, and if you are a student of McNeil University, you know that the statue is essentially a, a, a statue mem commemorating the passing of Steve Jobs when he was an undergraduate student at, at McGill and you know, showing the, 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 the poor um, um, uh, CS students working on their projects. If you have that knowledge, okay, you know, the answer is two. So all this insight bring us to delve into this idea of how can we predict or infer things that beyond what can be directly perceived from visual appearance. Before we delve into um, the, uh, the, the actual task that we're focusing on, like Yanya said, the current field are mainly focusing um, uh, and, and treating visual recognition as kind of like a pattern matching. So the definition, if we, I put it down, is more or less uh, follow this definition of visual recognition as a cognitive process that involves identification of a visible category from previous encounters. Whenever you see previous encounters, you, you feel comfortable because that means data. And annotated data from annotated data, I can identify which category this uh, visual appearance, visual input is. But the essentially, the actual definition of visual recognition, if you go to the um, dictionary, is defined as a cognitive process that involves identification of a visible, uh, here is the difference, right? So in a pattern matching um, um, language is category, but in a visual recognition, um, cognitive process is a concept, right? Not, and not only from the previous encounters, which we are happy with the data, also from the knowledge. And if you delve into the definition of concept, then there is in, indeed a theory of concepts being discussed over the thousands of years. Uh, a concept describes the kind of knowledge stored in concepts, the way they are used in agents' cognitive process, their format, their acquisition, and, and sometimes also to their neural localizations. I read this book at Yanis Personal Library. Um, uh, it's from a philosopher in Canada. Um, at, at Edward Maltry, and uh, in short, the book basically saying categories does not equivalent to concept, thus visual recognition does not equivalent to visual recognition as a pattern matching. So that's the general idea that we um, built our uh, research on. The idea is great, um, but in the current environment of AI, uh, you really need benchmarking tasks to publish. So inevitably, we need to um, um, ground onto um, research tasks that are widely accepted by the community. And these are the um, um, challenges that we're attending to, uh, coming, uh, uh, starting from image captioning, which basically give an image to um, output a sentence. I'll talk about actually uh, tracing back to 2011, um, at Yanis lab, we published the first paper uh, talking about generating sentences from images. And more recently, there are even bigger data set doing video captioning, MSR, VTT, VTEX, um, extra, extra. In the middle is uh, a bit more cognitive processing that we're attending to visual question answering. And more recently, there is a new task called the visual um, common sense reasoning from LNAI. On the right is if we put them into an uh, active agent uh, agent perspective, then we can also um, extend the, the same paradigm into visual navigation. And in visual navigation domain, we work on how 3D AI to solve all this data set. So just um, put out the, you know, the prior uh, work from uh, all the um, uh, enormous efforts of collecting all this benchmarking data set for us to 
um, validating our ideas. So to start talk about um, knowledge representations, at the very beginning, we um, show that simply use linguistic contextual information, such as the uh, statistics co occurrences between sentences, we can already show certain out, um, outperforming performance at that time, right? So tracing back to um, 2011 um, and EMNOP 2011, um, we had a publication on image um, caption generation from uh, sentences, uh, um, um, sentence generation from images using uh, um, uh, a linguistic context information um, extracted from a vast um, a linguistic corpus. And then that kind of um, correlations and co-occurrences also help with, let's say, action recognition for, for, for cognitive robots. Then I joined ASU, we come to this idea, and that's, that's about the time the, the visual graphs getting popular. And at that time, we proposed a new um, uh, formalism called structural scene description graphs. The difference between single scene description graphs than the other uh, um, uh, image graphs is that we are not only encoding the things that you can be perceived, but also the nodes that are basically inferred and retrieved from uh, open knowledge um, corpuses such as WordNet, ConceptNet, um, et cetera, et cetera. And we are showing that with that formalism, we can do um, image captioning task with um, 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 to some extent success, and also do uh, image retrieval tasks uh, to some extent um, uh, uh, with success. So I'm showing here that our masters can all outperform at that time, like um, two years, um, three years ago, outperform on Kaparsis, um, 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 famous neural talking paper on um, smaller data set, but won't be able to compete with them um, on a larger data set. I will talk about the reason later. And the same um, kind of observation we, we observe on um, um, the uh, other, uh, on, the, um, on the image retrieval task as well. Now, what's the pros that we uh, learn from using uh, explicit knowledge representation to do um, visual captioning as well as image captioning. So first of all, uh, explicit reasoning is very compatible with this explicit knowledge representations. So with such a representation or SDGs, we can enable um, explicit, re explicit reasoning over multiple knowledge resources. As shown it here, right, um, we can essentially plug in uh, phrasal knowledge, uh, visual relationships, BQA priors, question relations together into an engine. And at that time we do um, rely on PSL, um, probabilistic soft logic engine to uh, re rank the reasoning process. Um, here is given an example. At the same time, there is also a good part about um, explicit knowledge representation is it, if you, 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 you do a decoding of the process, you get uh, so-called explicit explanations for end users. So in a, um, a work that we, we present at AAAI 2018, we showed that using SDGs to do visual question answering, we'll be able to trace back and also not only just give, let's say what, uh, why the other methods or our methods giving out wrong answers, but also showing evidences. Uh, evidences encoded in a human readable languages that explain um, why um, uh, a certain uh, system um, um, error happens and why our um, outputs actually achieve um, correct answers. Well, with that being said, um, the, um, the, the shortcomings of explicit knowledge representation is also obvious. Um, First of all, even with the soft um, reasoning engines, right? So with uh, reasoning engines can, can, can take in probabilities. Um, the lingering inconsistencies among multiple res knowledge resources could still hurt the overall performance, right? And uh, there is a high fidelity requirement, which means the low error tolerance towards knowledge um, uh, uh, sources, which means if there are um, uh, wrongly labeled or uh, wrongly input knowledge, um, the system can hardly overcome that. 
And the most important is it's fairly computational expensive. Even with an accelerated P PSL engine, um, it's still far slower than the uh, end-to-end -end approaches. Um, in the triple AI paper where we benchmarked the PSL-based um, 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 visual, visual question answering uh, with convolutional networks. And we're showing that in, for some categories, it's outperforming end-to-end um, -end, uh, um, 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 uh, at that time, the best um, algorithms. But for most of the categories is still um, struggle to overcome. Of course, there is also concerns with how VQA being set up and how it's it actually being evaluated, which I'm going to talk about later. But one of the observation is also also struggles us to 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 really um, 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 had a, had a, had a strong voice uh, in the community using explicit knowledge representation is essentially bounded by the performance. All right, till now I basically talked about. Um, a bunch of work with my first PhD students. At the very beginning, he is also a, a close collaborator. Um, uh, Somak Adikya, um, a, a bunch of publications he made focusing on explicit knowledge recommendation and, in, and he joined uh, Microsoft Research India uh, fairly recently after graduating. And so, we know explicit knowledge representation has limitations. So what's next? That's the question we ask ourselves. One of the observations that we make actually at the, around uh, early 2019, um, there's a new um, um, top performing uh, methodology, LXMERT, um, published by um, 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 Benso's group at um, UNC performing fairly well and is having the leading performance on VQA. So at that time, we, we start to play around with their online demo, right? Whenever we have online dem demo, uh, the first insight is how oh, I want to break it. So we start to play around with the online demo and now we found that um, even with a simple logical operations to be applied onto the input question, for example, here is the plate grain, the answer is yes. And if I put, put the question as, is the plate not grain? The answer is yes again, which is essentially showing that the current end-to-end -end models won't be able to understand or comprehend negation. The same applies to conjunction and disjunction, right? So the similar observation is coming um, again and again and again, showing that uh, those fairly basic logical operands, which is the fundamental thing for visual reasoning is not being encoded and learned or being captured by the top performing uh, VQA perform, uh, uh, models. So what will be the solution? So one of the solution we want to try at that time is can we, instead of use explicit, not, explicit knowledge representation, can we adopt so-called explicit knowledge distillation to distill um, this uh, human understanding of our logical operands into a data re-engineering paradigm. And at the end, we want to improve VQA robustness. So here is a, um, a basically a, a, a visualization of why you know, uh, things didn't happen. And also, um, um, we can also have a, a combination of uh, lo logical operands, um, the statement or the questions, and find that, OK, um, the VQA model uh, is not being able to answer it correctly. So in order to um, validate this idea, we first choose yes and no questions from the VQA data set to act as components for our um, uh, um, data re-engineering process. And um, at the very beginning, we, we retrain, retain yes and no questions with a single unambiguous answer and choosing on animals slayed by all human annotators. And then we can treat these propositions with choose values and combine them using uh, logical operators. Here, here is uh, some example of um, um, negations. Um, um, most of the processing is automated using NLP technologies. And we can also apply it onto compositions 
So compositions, we get 10 logically composed questions for each pair of original yes, no questions. So for example, if the original yes uh, question notation is, is there a beer, the answer is yes. And we can um, um, automatically generate, is there no beer? Is there, uh, is there beer and is the man wearing shoes, uh, extra, extra, extra. And the true answers can always be inferred from the original uh, annotations using logical combinations. And in order to even um, make the data set or the data creation more diverse, we start to using objects and antonyms and captions from uh, MS Coco um, caption data. So we essentially uh, use the object annotations and the captions to create a supplementary yes and no questions um, uh, from uh, the original set. For example, uh, when the input uh, object is bottle, there, there could be uh, supplemented with adversarial antonym as one glass or cup as a ball, spoon, sw uh, swept it as fork. So, so if you say is there a spoon and then you swap it as zero fork, and then you check there's no fork in the MS Coco annotation, you get a new VQA uh, training data. Is there a fork? Should be no. And then we apply negation, conjunction, and disjunction to combine those multiple supplemented questions as well and get an a, a even larger um, um, annotated data space um, using uh, objects, antonyms, and captions. So uh, let me talk a little bit about the model. The model basically starts with an image and taking a question. Uh, a question is logically connected and goes through a cross model feature encoder, you know, typical uh, feature extraction uh, uh, paradigm. Uh, first, trying to um, 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 uh, categorize its uh, yes and no question, and then um, getting the logical connections focusing on uh, logical terms and not extra extra and lying in the core of the um, paradigm is a, a fairly old um, classic laws called Fretchet compatibility laws to essentially ensure the training is following the logical connections. So let me talk a little bit about the Fretchet compatibility laws. It's basically provide upper and lower bounds for probabilities of logical combinations of propositions. So here, um, A1, A2 are the answers from our models for each separate terms. And big A is the combine of them, whether A1 is and or conjunction or disjunction, right? And using the Fretchet inequality bounds, which is proposed in 1935, we basically can add on a, a, a new loss that um, um, constrain our models to predict answers that is compatible with the underlying logical operations. So we had this idea, we had this work, we sent to uh, CVTPR and got rejected. Uh, one of the um, question um, uh, the review is not happy with is, okay, so um, you are augmenting the data and, um, and, and why don't you compare with approach that essentially doing a parsing um, paradigm and decompose the question into se um, separate questions and then and combine them together. So we did a further uh, extension and uh, set up a best baseline using a parsing algorithm, um, basically a bird-based uh, ER model, neural parsing model that tags the sequence with um, their uh, semantic tags and then use the tags, let's say there is an and, there is an or in the uh, input question and then re-combine um, uh, the outputs from the um, uh, QA models. And later in, in our experiment, experiments, we are going to show that um, this baseline is not going to outperform uh, our training directly on the augmented data. So uh, since it's doing uh, visual question answering with this new lens of logic with WIT VQA uh, law. And um, here is some um, examples that showing um, using the SOTA methods, um, they won't be able to deal with the um, logical compositions, which is a fundamental reasoning and capabilities for any intelligent systems 
aka including human beings. But with our augmentation, the system will be able to take care of that. So uh, we did um, um, experiments um, um, using our new data and performance is also reported on the composition, the supplement. And by the way, VQA Compose and VQA Supplement are the um, data that we, uh, VQA Compose is uh, simply compose the questions and getting the new data. VQA Supplement is used, is, is, is adopt MS COCO uh, annotations to even augment them. So VQA Supplement is much more challenging than VQA Compose uh, in this sense. And uh, we show that our low model is able to retain performance on VQA V2 while achieving improvements on all validation data, which including VQA comp and VQA sub. And there is also a question from um, the community, like how can the model deal with multiple operands? Let's say, is there a cat and there is, is there a dog and there is there a, a, a human being? So we show that with multiple operands, our model can still generalize. So even we train on a single operands, the model um, has uh, um, showing a, 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 a performance, it seems that it, it start to understand um, the logical uh, operands and, and, and perform according to uh, logical connecting questions as well. Also, uh, we tried the so-called commutative, commut commutative property, which is also fundamental, right? So if, if you're, you will be able to answer Q1 and Q2, then the system should be, answer, should be able to answer Q2 and Q1. So we show that um, this generalization is also being um, preserved. Um, there is also the question of how many logical samples are needed to achieve uh, this robustness in logical um, understanding. Uh, we show that, uh, and it's also very interesting to observe that models trained only on VQA comp examples are not able to generalize well to VQA sub with a marked uh, difference of 15%. And the conclusion is at least 100K samples are needed before models can achieve a level of robustness to understand the logical operands. Uh, we did um, the robustness uh, studies with respect to the number of operands. Also, as I mentioned, that there is the baseline model uh, using parsing. We show that um, LOL models maintain uh, overall performance on the VQA test data and at the same time substantially improve from random performance to around 82.39% on VQA Compose and around 90% on VQA Supplement. So um, in short, this basically shows that um, the logical connectives in questions can be learned while not degrading the overall performance on the original VQA test set. And with that um, 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 uh, experimental observation we got, we're basically saying, okay, explicit uh, knowledge distillation with data engineering seems to be a solution to overcome um, the current end-to-end -end models that is lacking the understanding of um, uh, fundamental basic reasoning uh, uh, um, capabilities such as logical op operation. Um, um, actually, um, this work is one part of a vast amount of work, uh, which is an active area of research within the past year with many challenges and benchmarks being established. I'm going to name a little, uh, a few of them um, 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 from um, the, the prior work and our work um, basically, uh, we want to argue opens up a new dimension of research. Um, by training models to be robust to log logical transformations of questions. Now, with that um, empirical observation, we continue with the question that's basically saying, if VQA OL is doing so-called linguistic re-engineering, can we do image re-engineering to improve model robustness, right? So um, 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 LOL is, operating on the language side. 
uh, 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 straightforward um, extensions can we also operate on the image side? So that leads to the following uh, uh, um, challenge. Uh, this challenge is actually um, quite well known. It's called the um, uh, VQACP. Basically, the um, language bias is being identified um, and, and pointed out as a as a data set flaw from VQA original VQA data set for. For, for, for many of the, uh, the systems can answer these questions purely relying on the language bias cause the data set is um, uh, strongly biased. And the VQACP from um, um, Davi um, group are uh, showing that um, and they reorganizing of the VQA data set to balance the distribution of answers for question type and, and designed in, in such a way designed in, in, in the training set and test set, they are uh, so-called um, uh, not ID, but OD. Um, to build upon our insight that uh, re-engineering the linguistic um, uh, uh, apart using um, knowledge uh, or human understanding of the logical representations, we can similarly to um, conduct mutations. And here mutations is to implicitly allow the model to understand the critical changes in the input, which lead to a change in the answer in a sense that we can use uh, image in painting techniques to update the current annotated uh, VQA pairs and then come up with the new answer that is basically following the um, um, predefined operation. So uh, here we are showing that um, the, 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 the VQA model that we want to um, be exposed to perceptually similar, but also semantically dissimilar examples. So, um, more formally, we define mutation as a transformation of the input X, which leads to a new output. Um, again, uh, many of the techniques we are talking about here are attending to VQA task, which is a category of the vision and language task. But I, I, we want to argue that many of these techniques can also be generalized to other tasks, as long as um, the same form, form, uh, formalism can be adopted to aug augment the training data. So for VQA, X star can be created, which is the mutation of X by image mutation or by um, a, a, a question mutation le leading to a new answer. So in this work, we use removal, removal of objects or more morphing colors of objects as the image mutation operations and masking substitution and negation as question mutation operations. So some of the examples of using in painting to change the input, right? So when you're, you're focusing on the person and then you morph the person out, then currently the answer should be one instead of two from the original answer question. And the same can be applied to change the color of the horse. Of course, uh, uh, all these techniques also benefit from the advancement in um, um, generative models and image in painting techniques nowadays. Um, being uh, um, um, uh, um, showing um, um, good performance. And here is the uh, image mutation. Then we can also do the language mutation similarly to the law paper. And um, in this case, we can update the answer. Now, um, augmenting the data is one thing, how to use the insight of the augmented data to constrain the training of the model is the next question we ask ourselves. And in this specific word, we can come up with um, a, 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 a training framework that um, um, we use to train uh, models with mutant samples. And we basically perform in experiments with two cross model feature extractors and extract features for both original input and the mutant input. And later, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the, 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 the constraint that we put on the predicted uh, answers 
Um, but before we do that, um, let me also uh, mention the backhome models that we are using. One is Upton model, which is the winner of the VQE 2017, and uh, the other one from X LX Mert, which was considered, uh, it's still considered uh, one of the SOTA models um, in uh, VQA. And with those feature extraction uh, models, we also use so-called type exposure to first determine which um, question type it is, and then adopt the traditional VQA loss, which is um, um, is bounding the, the distance between the ground truth answer and the predicted answer, which is fairly traditional. But the uh, new thing is we also um, 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 uh, have a, 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 a training objective that operates in the space of the answer embeddings. The key idea is to map inputs, the image question pairs and output answers to a shared manifold in order to establish a matrix of similarity. And once we have this matrix of similarity being established, established then we can um, 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 put on so-called pairwise consistency, consistency loss. And pairwise consistency loss ensures the distance between the two predicted answer vectors is close to the distance between two ground truth answer vectors. What does it mean? It means, let's say the, uh, the ground truth answer for, uh, for the original notation is, um, is one um, here, uh, uh, the two, how many ships are there? And after mutation, the how many ships are there is zero. Then the distance between the ground truth notations should be bounded um, with the distance of the predicted uh, uh, answers in the joint um, 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 projection space. And this is the pairwise, pairwise consistency loss that we put to um, guide the training. So putting them together, we have traditional VQA loss, answer projection loss, and pair, pairwise consistency loss. And then we plot, um, put them together to enable, again, end-to-end uh, -end training and observe um, uh, actually fairly um, promising results in VQACP. VQACP is the one that already deal with the uh, language bias and balance the data. So we show that our models show substantial improvement compared to the, um, the up-down model LX MERT, about 10% improvements. Uh, using the con counterfactual sample synthesized with updown as the backbone. And an uh, 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 interesting observation is we also have a lower gap, the gap between VQACP um, and test, which is OOD out of distribution, and when trained on the original VQA data set, which is RID, I mean, independent and identical distributed test speed. It's a strong indication that the model is much more, um, uh, has a stronger generalization capability. Um, can train on um, ID um, a training set, but generalize onto OOD out of distribution test set. Um, again, we are always talking about data set. Later, I will talk about a little bit more insights on, on data set in vision language um, at the very end. So we show that mutant samples are helping with improving the performance um, and um, both image mutations and question mutations all contributes to um, performance improvements uh, with this ablation. And we also, uh, the, the, the most interesting thing is there is a technique called LMH, which essentially is um, a debiased strategy, a debiased strategy to debias the data set. When we apply LMH um, to our model, we show that there is actually a performance drop. So it's, this is an indication that um, we, we, we speculate. This is an indication that um, 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 the result is, can be attributed to um, using mutant. Uh, we are, uh, rem we, we are remo rem removing the linguistic priors that may not be uh, spurious, which means uh, the priors that may help in learning the task is being actually augmented. So using the uh, debiased strategy, 
directly onto the data, we are, going, we are essentially seeing a, a performance drop. All right, so if I may, I'll stop here um, for a few minutes to see if there's any um, question. Uh, we have one QA. Underline is used in an is there a word or otherwise pre-designed label used for you, or is the reasoning done using represented land by the system? Um, and, uh, I, I have a question from Levy. Uh, what is the underlying representation used for entities? Um, at that time, the underlying representation used um, by our reasoning is still uh, explicit words. So explicit uh, grounded words that is being captured by the word net or concept net. I'll talk about some of our insights later as well. Thank you. All right, so if I may, I'm going to move on with the presentation. Um, um, so I have one question. Uh, uh, yeah, please. How would you deal with uh, questions that are of the form, how many? Um, how much or how many? Mm -hmm. Like, oh. uh, you know, you, you have apples on a table, how many apples? Oh. Or uh, right. how many screws are on the table or whatever? Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 we, the, over the years, when we are playing with the VQA data set, um, counting questions essentially is indeed the most challenging ones. And, and, and most of the system that the doing counting, um, um, uh, uh, performing counting um, performance are fairly low. So if I have the, um, right. So as you can see that uh, the, the number, which is the, 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 the counting questions here, the, the, the third column always is the almost the lowest performance for every models, even with our uh, augmentation, right? So, um, um, I, 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 I believe underlyingly um, there is an uh, implicit uh, mechanism that has, uh, is, is trying to map the image features to the, uh, the, the, the number uh, concept. Um, but indeed, um, I would think a separate module that doing uh, explicit counting uh, may perform even better. But not to break the, uh, the, 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 the wholeness of, of, of the paradigm with still um, um, augment the um, data using um, uh, muta mutations. Uh, um, numbers can be changed by morphing the, the input image as well. Uh, Janis, mm -hmm. if you are interested, we can discuss about it later. It's, sure, it's sure. indeed um, the, the question type wise performance it's also fairly interesting to look into in this task. Thank you. So uh, I think I'm actually running out of time, right? But since I started a bit late, so maybe I can have a bit more time. <laughs> of course, of course. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, we talk about LOL and mutant from data augmentation. And, and, and this basically is uh, CSS work from another PhD student working fairly, uh, performing extremely well uh, in these two years. Uh, TGS Go Halley, uh, LOL, Mutant, and recently we have a new AAAI 21 paper uh, accepted in for um, adversarial training using attributes for natural perturbations. I don't have time to talk about it later, um, um, to talk about it today. And uh, I would quickly go over the next work, which I think is very interesting, but the idea is fairly, fairly simple. So I think it's not worth too much of time to talk, in, uh, talk about it. Uh, it's a great work uh, in, in any case. So the, the idea is, can we actually distill this expressive knowledge into a model that to enrich a generated output such as video captions, right? Um, uh, there is a new data set uh, and, and a new corpus because it's, it's, it's purely linguistic. So it's a corpus um, by Allen AI called Atomic um, Atlas of Machine Common Sense. So in the definition of Atlas, basically uh, event is being defined as a caption, the person is eating 
And then there are human annotated cause, effect, and attributes. So causes, because he is hungry, effect is he wants to finish all the food on his plate. And the attribute is he is seen as starving, right? So the research question we ask ourselves is, can we do video understanding or video captioning to build beyond a, a, a single um, description such as a group of person dancing in a room to include inferred cause, inferred effect, and inferred attributes. So in order to do that, following a similar paradigm, we start with a video captioning data. We augment it with common sense knowledge source, which is atomic. And by simply augmenting it, we got a lot of noise. So we train a BERT-based re-ranking to, um, to, 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 to fine tune the, 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 the intention and cause and attributes. And at the end, we also did human annotation to check whether the I mean, uh, we, we, we didn't ask the annotator to annotate everything. We, we provide them with candidates. So their annotation efforts are essentially uh, minimized, just pretty basically click yes or no. And if there's a, a wrongly labeled intention for this specific video, then we kindly ask them to do a bit of rewriting using um, mechanical terms, um, like always. So, um, with that, we got a new data set called V2C. Um, here is the binary code, um, it's open. Um, basically, it's a data set with videos, caption, intention, effect, and attribute, um, 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 all, all being curated. So the fidelity of the data set is fairly high. And we then train a model on it basically uh, um, uh, a, a, a transformer model and showing that um, the uh, video um, common sense based transformer is able to predicting effect attributes intentions from the video data using the standard evaluation um, performance um, uh, uh, matrix outperforming the baseline models um, uh, in this specific work. And also interestingly, it can also do so-called uh, um, uh, description implementation. So in some sense, like, let me just um, quickly describe the, the, the exciting part of it is with this um, uh, uh, model, we can not only ju just tell what is actually happening with the video, but also somewhat talk about a story. And the story contains the cause because um, she wants to serve healthy meals. Then a woman making fish shaped food with bean paste. And then the effect is she will have food ready to eat soon. And there's the attribute the person is seen as skilled with their hands. So this augmentation is being made possible by um, combining a large video captioning data set with our, our relatively large uh, common sense reasoning atlas um, provided by Alan AI. So um, this is the um, um, using explicit knowledge to enrich generated output. Actually, we also um, um, explored how to use modularized design of fine grained visual texture alignment. Um, some of the work has been um, presented in CVPR 2019 and ECCV 2020. Um, this part is um, from um, Jacob, Jacob Julian Fong. Um, he joined my lab around 2017, and that's part of his work. Um, as I said, mo most of the work that I want to talk about today is lying in the, the, the yellow part, which is visual recognition beyond appearances. All right, so we talk about categories is not concepts and, and how to augment, how to distill knowledge, how to use explicit knowledge representation, how to distill implicit not knowledge representations in uh, uh, models. But there is also this highlighted definition. Um, uh, there is a, a fla flavor of agents here, right? So, so what does it mean, uh, visual recognition beyond appearance in an agent's field? So I'll give you guys a, a quick example as well. 
Um, oh, before we get into um, uh, the ideas, uh, we need data set uh, to publish, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> but the, 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 the task is also interesting. We, we, we do uh, so-called, um, sorry about it, um, robots with vision that finds object and using AI to song and other um, uh, visual navigation uh, simulation engines. Uh, it, the task is given a target object to a robot, virtual robot, uh, to um, taking in only the camera inputs to navigate to the object that within uh, this uh, simulated space and using reinforcement learning techniques. So um, I'll give you an example, right? So if a robot seeing um, this view as his input, if the goal is to locate music instrument using the visual navigation model, action will be move forward because TV set are typically considered more close to music instruments. But if the goal is to locate coffee mark, then the action probably should be turned right and you know, explore a little bit more and find kitchen. So by this example, we're showing that even with the same appearance or the same image or same visual input taken in by the robot, the action space are going to be widely changed based on the original goal that is being set to the agent. So it's, so it's, it's fairly straightforward active perception theory uh, following the active perception paradigm. Now, in order to explore this idea, we have multiple steps building um, to, to, to explore um, um, this uh, um, um, uh, um, um, task. So at the very beginning, we set up uh, um, IO and uh, um, agent that being able to basically uh, train a recognition guided action policy using um, uh, object recognition modules as input to the action policy learning. Then we say, show that, that, that use the uh, depth map as well as the semantic segmentation map, you can train a generalizable approaching policy um, uh, approaching means the object needs to be in the view at the very beginning and the robot are just trying to approach the object. Then beyond that, we start to explore the, um, the, 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 the active perception idea, um, how to model the relationship between objects using a hierarchical reinforcement learning approach. Um, basically, instead of trying to approach the target object that, uh, directly, gets through a, a certain um, uh, middle points. And this middle points is modeled by the relationship between uh, these objects. And um, very recently we uh, use so-called semantic um, hierarchical uh, 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 um, policy learning uh, show that the uh, system is much more generalizable. And then we put in the flavor of knowledge representation here on uh, try to learn the goal relationship using Bayesian networks and use that goal relationship. Let's say um, coffee mark is typically has a strong relation with a uh, um, uh, um, cooking machine, at extra, extra, you will be able to uh, locate, enable the agent to locate the object much more faster. So I have a video demo here. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to skip to the very end. So as you can see, uh, let me try to, right. So um, here is a model that uh, essentially with hierarch hierarchical ring, um, um, policy, but this policy is without early stop. As you can see, um, um, all the intermediate goals are being explored and um, the agents are basically um, would be stuck in some places and the efficiency is low. But if we use GRG, which is a, a, a better modeling of a, 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 a knowledge representation modeling of the underlying objects, then the performance can be improved. By the way, on the left is the, 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 the robot view. And if we put early termination, which means you don't necessarily need to reach the intermediate goal, but whenever you see the new goal uh, showing, you can update your goal to find the object. The performance is much more you know, um, um, efficient. 
And, and this is also being benchmarked by AI Tucson, uh, House 3D, all the data center. So it's um, a one um, direct application of um, a, a vision beyond appearance um, by my student Shane. She is graduating soon, um, performing fairly well. And uh, one last thing I want to talk about that if I have time really is um, I learned a lot from Yanis and one specific thing that we always um, uh, um, uh, compare is what is being shown in a data set and what is actually being observed in a real world. A data set consists of individual inputs that's changing from one image to another image quite dramatically. But if you adopt uh, active agents, uh, uh, deploy it in the real world, the scene, the temporal relationship of the visual inputs uh, essentially matters, right? So for example, if you're currently observing a, 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 a street scene, you're not going to be suddenly moved to an uh, indoor scene. In this sense, we come up with a, a, a technique called temporal knowledge distillation. This idea is uh, fairly straightforward. That's assuming that's the whole visual space you need to model. And deep model basically captures most of it. But as an active agent, you don't necessarily need to have the understanding or have the robust model for all the, all the, all the visual space. While you are moving along the, 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 the environment, you can adaptively adapt the space and uh, the, 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 the shallow model that is responding much more faster than the, uh, the deep model um, based on which environment you are setting in. And this transition is basically can be distilled into a shallow model knowledge. So we call it um, uh, temporal knowledge distillation. I don't have time to talk too much about it, um, but we have publication at WACV. And re more recently, we, we put them onto FPGA based uh, hardware. Basically, the shallow model is FPGA, the deep model is um, uh, 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 GPU. And then putting them together, we call it the Argos framework. Um, and we are showing that the, on the embedded devices, the framework, frame, frame rate is higher than the other um, compressed um, uh, neural network uh, frameworks and the energy consumption is lower. So I, we can collaborating with a Facebook researcher uh, on embedded devices, we can essentially measure the energy consumption and uh, a, a higher score. The score is the performance. It's from my student, Muhammad Fahadi, graduating very soon as well. And he is starting a new startup called Argos Vision, um, building on the technology. All right, so with all this um, being said, I want to share a bit of my um, um, thoughts and wrapping up messages um, to our audiences and also uh, initiate maybe some discussion along these lines. So there is a talk from A.E. Frost um, in ICML 20. Uh, he talked about uh, a, 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 a new era called post data set era, right? So. Um, many of the research that I presented here will not stick to the original data set set, right? So actually, I tell my students, if you are doing research following the exactly uh, training and testing protocol, there must be something wrong. Um, Cause um, <laughs> you know, that, that's not too many things, too, too much novelties you can, you can bring, right? So how do we better prepare towards the post data set era uh, I know Yanis have been talking about this for, 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 for 20 years um, or even more. And, and, and I think it's happening. Um, um, the new technology and self-supervised learning all that um, makes data sets basically a bit obsolete. And there is also a cycle that I'm observing. And if we are looking at from a micro historical view, right? So there is this vicious cycles of vision and language research, I call it. Um, or sometimes we can even generalize it a bit more in AI. Uh, what, what's happening? Every time you have an exciting new challenge, then people jump onto it and performance saturation, then some flaws of the, uh, the data set being identified like VQACP or language bias. And these flaws are not new per se, cause previously these flaws are being brought up 
uh, over and over and over. I mean, in, in, in pure QA uh, uh, question answering uh, community, people talk about language bias for, 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 for tens of years. So, so, so merely bringing this or, or, or talking about language bias in a new data set doesn't really contribute to the community outside of the, 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 the current community, right? And then you see performance resaturation again, and then it's, uh, it, the cycle goes on and on. And there is an auto cycle. The auto cycle happens in captioning. And then we have VQA, and then recently VLN, Visual Language Navigation, and more recently, the Visual Common Sense Reasoning. Uh, one of the uh, triple AI paper this year talking about VCR, if you want to answer VCR questions, as long as you match the question with the candidate answers, and if the, 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 the sentence similarity is high, and just simply pick the candidate answer with the highest sentence similarity, your performance will be, I, I don't know, I, I forgot the exact number, but it's around 75%. So, 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 so basically the same language bias being proposed to, to deal with VQA is being identified again, right? So somewhat we are stuck in this uh, circle, uh, cycles. So we have some efforts to talk about, uh, we tried self-supervised learning might be the way to deal with it. And, and, and one another line is to do adversarial training um, to, 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 to break the cycles. So one of the, the tasks that we're currently trying to do is trying to um, propose a workshop um, uh, along uh, focusing on this problem and um, it's still ongoing. I, I don't have a clear um, um, deadline in mind yet, but, but I think it, it worth the community to, 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 to discuss about it as well. So um, I'm already approaching the end of the talk. Um, I would like to um, talk a little bit about autonomous driving. This is what ASU we are seeing every day. We have auto cars driving around the campus and there's also auto taxis. And if you guys are following the news, there is this um, unfortunate, unfortunate event happened very close to ASU campus, which basically uh, 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 Uber Oh, I shouldn't mention the company. Uh, uh, some autonomous vehicle uh, uh, companies, you know, safety person is basically looking at the uh, cell phone, and then uh, and they the, the car hit uh, the lady, which is a homeless lady, and, and she died. And that happens of 2008. So that brings the Arizona uh, government into the question of how to regulate the autonomous driving cars that's driving on road. And then we bring that, okay, essentially autonomous driving car driving on road, essentially it's an intent infer inference problem. You need to understand the intents of the other agents in, the, in a game that believes of other intents in a short am amount of time. So it's a um, showcase of why intent uh, encoding is important in autonomous driving. And what we have the challenges, we have an, uh, in our pro project dealing with the intent inference here. And we also um, deployed a um, vision system. Here is um, we developed at um, the intersection of Arizona. By the way, um, um, we can show the top down view of the intersection with four existing cameras and then utilize the classic computer vision technologies with deep learning to bond each uh, vehicle in 3D. And some of the vehicles are auto cars. So when they are driving through the intersection, we can measure their behaviors and, and, and uh, hopefully, ideally, rate them as, okay, your company is doing well, your company is doing less well, your company is doing, 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 doing not so good, uh, give out a, a measure using you know, existing camera. Why using existing cameras? Because existing cameras are already there. And uh, this is what we are working on for you know, autonomous driving part and putting things together also with the routing that the uh, work that I've been working with Yanis in early days that shows the whole landscape of the research 
And with that being said, as said, I want to acknowledge all the funding resources, including NSF Career, R Small, NI, CPS, CCR, DAPA Kairos, uh, ONR Social Interaction, and IM, which is, is essentially an umbrella institute um, 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 uh, host Intel State Farm and Exponent. And the current members of my lab and the close collaboration with Chita Barao in knowledge representation and NLP and Max Yiren in optimization and machine learning. Uh, many of the math is figured out by him. So <laughs> I want to attribute to him uh, a lot um, for, for the work. So with that being said, um, thank you all for attending today's meeting. Thank you, Yetsu. Thank you. Thank you. It was great. You have gone very deep into this uh, question answering uh, process. Uh, I have a question about questions that uh, are why questions. Mm -hmm. So, so this this corpus that you you, you described uh, from uh, Choi mm -hmm. and others in OpenAI, this is a linguistic kind of corpus. Is right. that so? Yes. So let me find the slide. So basically, if you look at a video, let's say, mm -hmm. where someone is doing something, you can ask questions that involve why, uh, why uh, about related, related to something that is happening in the video. Oh, true. Okay. Yeah. So, so, and we can think about ways of answering that if we have action representation. But the why that is not visible in the video is very hard. It has to do with common True. sense knowledge, as, as you say. True, indeed. Um, so, like so you see, you see somebody killing somebody else, for example, uh -huh. and you ask, why is this guy killing this guy? Mm -hmm. And you have to have context. You have to have information to answer this, right? Indeed. And, and so my question to you is this new corpus, because I'm not familiar with it. Mm -hmm. Is it something like the Praxicon? But uh, like, I mean, I, I, so you say somebody is eating, right? Mm -hmm. you, you saw this example that someone is eating and then he is eating because he is hungry, right? Mm -hmm. So you have you have the preconditions or the, the reasons, and you have the effects, right? So um, so here I'm showing an example of the atlas. Uh, uh, they call it uh, atlas of uh, common sense um, atomic. Okay. So, so basically, it's a template, right? Um, templates showing that x repels y's attack. X y can be replaced. And if X repels Y's attack, then its attribute is X is seen as um, uh, uh, brave, strong. And the cause of X is because X wants to do ABC, um, the, the effects is as a result, X wants to do a, B, C, D. So, so, so that's the, the, the linguistic. Oh, I see, I see. So they have, they have the information in the form of those kinds of uh, schemas, you can say. Right, right. So, 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 so that's why I, I, I skipped through this work a bit more, a bit, bit the fast is what we essentially did is we put captions, passes, put them into the templates and then augment the caption, uh, video caption um, data set with um, uh, possible effects and attributes and cause using atomic. Uh, in order to get a high fidelity data, we also did the ranking and, and human curation as well. Um, but to answer Yanis, one of the questions you were mentioning about question answering. So essentially we also um, um, provide uh, question answering data using, using, using V2C as well. So, so here we are showing um, some of the questions are being asked uh, in the data set. So, so what might be the goal of the person and the uh, answer, the ground truth answer is to record a video, a music video and or, or, or yes and no questions with negation. Does the person wants to not to get recognition? The answer is no. Does the person wish to express himself? The answer is yes. 
um, um, uh, and, and this data set is also um, um, public available um, for, 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 for further use. Very interesting, very interesting. Yeah. Um, um, VTEX is a, is a, is a uh, uh, MSR VTT is a large video uh, data set. So it contains, um, if I can find the information, it contains uh, 10K videos with 10 to 30 seconds long. Uh, they're being, being, being utilized as the, um, the, the, the starting point for augmentation. Very interesting. So uh, my last question has to do with these mutant, mutants that you are talking about, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. To mutate. So basically what you are calling for is some kind of an image editing technique or composition technique, right? So you can go into an image and if you are able to take out objects, or to put in new objects, mm -hmm. then you are immediately creating new data, mm -hmm. basically. Right. Um, we we refrained from saying it is a hallucination process, but I think fundamentally it shows some flavor of hallucination. I mean, imagination here, right? Um, so essentially, if you have a QA pair, like like teaching a kid, you have a let's say this is. Uh, giraffe, one giraffe, and then and, and, and the training pair is an image of giraffe and the answer, how many giraffe are there, answer is one, then um, I assume as human beings, we start to imagine all different cases. Uh, for if there's another giraffe in the image, if I, I, I were to answer the question, how many giraffe are there, the answer should be two. So, so so, 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 so this process is being, so this process is being, being, being so somewhat uh, carried out. And, and another um, insight and also the question to answer is essentially, um, it's also interesting uh, uh, in a sense that in painting is an AI, right? It's a generative model. Now we are using an AI to generate data to train another AI, <laughs> right? So, 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 so if we establish such a loop, now if you have uh, in painting that is generating data to train a, a, a VQA, and then you have a better VQA model to, to generate data to train in painting. We haven't been so successful in establishing such a loop, but, but that's, that's something we want to, we want to identify. Because ultimately, um, like I said, a post data set era, um, I think the post data set era um, will ultimately lead us to uh, having AIs to generate data to train on other AIs and, and, and make an AI. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, Some kind of an infinite loop. <laughs> all bootstrapping, right? Um, right, right, right. That's the hope. We have, That's we the, have hope. the hope. We have the hope to to see some example in vision and language task because 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 a, a recent paper got, we got rejected from Triple AI is using image captions to create QA pairs to train VQA models. <laughs> so 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 you don't really, you don't really need the QA uh, annotations um, VQA uh, um, data set to train a reliable VQA model. You can simply synthesize QAs from right. image captions. And how to synthesize them is using, using NLP tools, which are AIs. Very interesting, man. Yeah. Um, Very good. Any, <laughs> any other questions from uh, the audience? I guess people have been going. There's another meeting. Mm -hmm. There's a competition. Yeah. There's Sorry, a competition. I was, it, it was taking a bit long. Um, no, that's fine. That's fine. It was very interesting. Uh, you broaden our horizons. Uh, you showed uh, very interesting avenues. Thank you for, we can thank do you things. For, for having me here today.